that better? Excellent. Thank you for that choice. Well, good morning to you all again. Yeah. As many of you all know, our uh, majors are on holiday at the moment, and our thanks to uh, Peter Birch for leading the meeting last Sunday, and to majors Linda and Morris, who will lead today's meeting. Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Barber Sharp continues to be in hospital and uh, I'm sure you'll continue to pray for, for Barbara and the family, although I feel I've got some information coming in from behind. Yes, yeah, she's actually home, we only found out today. Right, okay, so, so up-to-date information. Yes, uh, <laughs> Barbara's home. Uh, but she, she obviously has had a tough time. Uh, she's been in for a couple of weeks now and uh, our prayers continue to be with the family there. Now from next Sunday, things are getting very much back to normal. And we'll provide a lot of information on that uh, at the meeting next Sunday. But just a couple of announcements uh, that you might want to know about, especially for that, that uh, Monday the uh, 6th, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Monday the 6th is the start of the cafe church. That's the, uh, the cafe in the morning, followed by the Cameo Club uh, after lunch, so uh, we'll tell you more about the timings for that next week, but that's a new venture for the core. And then just to mention that the Friday coffee morning, which will restart, will now restart on the 17th and not the 10th. So in that week where the cafe starts, the Friday coffee morning isn't on that week, we'll start the next week. Again, we'll make that a little clear next Sunday. But one other new venture that we have is starting next Sunday at 10 a.m. in this upper hall will be a 10 to 15 minute prayer meeting which will happen every Sunday. And that will be led by different members of the core and it's a new venture that we, uh, we want to start uh, as a form of regular prayer leading into our worship meeting. So that starts from uh, 10 a.m. next Sunday morning and all are welcome to that. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Our theme this morning is family, being part of the family of God. Well, I don't know about you, but when we've not been able to join with our families properly, we had a, I had a Facebook picture from our friend in Sheffield's family in, in Canada, and they're meeting up with them the first time in nearly two years. And the joy of meeting. Well, it's good that we can be here. We know there are people away, but we are here as the family of God. And we're going to praise God for the fact that we can meet together. And it's, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. If you want to stand up, please do, but don't feel you have to. But let's sing this together. you like to be seated and we turn to that lovely song of praise to God a psalm of thanksgiving psalm 100 
Shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. And it's marvellous that we can be coming together as, yes, part of the family of God. But we can send our thoughts to those people who aren't here today. But... 330 in the songbook, but I know the words are, as we are gathered, Jesus is here. One with each other, Jesus is here. Joined by the Spirit, washed in the blood, part of the body, the Church of God. Yes, as salvationists. Salvation is because we believe that Jesus died and shed his blood for the sins of the world. As we are gathered, Jesus is here. Let's just sing these words and feel God's love and feel the presence of Jesus here in our meeting. And I'm so sure so many of us have so much to thank the Lord for, the very fact we can be here, and perhaps the health and the strength, and the fact that even through some of the bad times, the Lord has been our sufficiency. Prayers have been answered, and we can trust the God, and we come to worship him this morning, and we sing, come now is the time to worship. Now is the time to give your heart. Come just as you are to worship. Come just as you are before your God. Come. And yeah, one day every tongue will confess that you are Lord. We've already been saying how sad it is that there are people that have used this last few months as an opportunity to move away from church. But we are praying that those people will realize their need of the living God 
And so let's sing these words together. And as we come before the Lord in prayer, I'm going to ask Morris if he'll play that as we are gathered again. I'm sure we can think of people who we are praying for, perhaps people who used to worship with us. And on Monday at the funeral, we saw so many, so many. And perhaps you have someone in your mind who you want to pray for at this time and so I'm going to ask Morris to play it just a couple of times through before we come before the Lord in prayer. <laughs> And Lord, God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that as, a, as your children, as part of your family, we can come before you this morning and make our prayers to you. In the quietness of this place, we can bring our heartfelt prayers. You've heard the prayers of each one who has 
lifted up specific names and people who need our prayers. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are a God who answers prayer. You said whatever we ask in your, uh, our, your name, we will have. And I just thank you, Lord, for answered prayers in the past and that now we can continue to bring our prayers to you. And so just come to us this morning and help us to feel that uh, sense of your presence, that power of your presence. And as we bring before you the individual prayers, but also we think of those who really need our prayers. Yes, we, we just thank you for those who have been restored to help, those who are still perhaps anticipating treatment. And we just thank you, Lord, that we can bring those prayers to you and knowing that you are that God of love who brings your healing. And so we say thank you, Lord, and thank you that we can come this morning as part of your family. And I just pray your blessing upon us. And we ask our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen 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 thank you very much you've got your Bibles we're reading this morning from Ephesians chapter 1 and commencing to read at verse 3 to verse 14 Ephesians and chapter 1 the words are on the screen all praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with him. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that the, we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The Spirit of God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we could praise and glorify him. Amen.
Well, I said the song that's been chosen for the songsters this morning uh, is a song called Moment by Moment. And uh, it talks very much of uh, being more and more like the Lord. Getting up each morning with the sunshine in my heart has been the best, Lord. It's been the best. And lying down each evening with his, my burdens at your feet, I found the rest. And it's marvelous. I've been blessed to know that you walk with me. I've tried my best to grow each time you talk to me. And isn't that marvelous? But uh, well, the words are going to be on the screen. I did say there are so many songsters here but that we could have sung it. Well, if you want to sing along, with it, you can do, okay? Maureen said, no, not without a practice. We don't know what it will sound like, but uh, this is the Staff Songsters and Leicester South Songsters. And so uh, uh, they're going to be singing it this morning. But the important thing is, more like you.
And isn't that what family life is all about? Moment by moment. And we have our good moments and we have our bad moments. We have our ups and we have our downs. We have our quiet times. We have our not so quiet times. We might love the person we're with and sometime we might have an argument. But moment by moment, we can actually acknowledge Jesus as being the center of our lives and God as our Father who helps us with whatever is happening. Now we are going to be just giving opportunity for a testimony. There might be someone who has something you want to share, perhaps about your family, perhaps just about yourself as part of God's family and all that is happening and we're going to sing Jesus put this song into our hearts it's a song of joy no one can take away and there are situations that try to take that joy away but with the Lord at the center of our family and so we're going to sing this song together we're going to sing if you want to stand up and sing and then perhaps sit down after that and if somebody would like to come and just say something about what the Lord is uh, doing for you at this particular time but uh, it's a good time for us all isn't it to think about it but yeah. if you want to stand Jesus put this song into our heart. Jesus put this song into our heart. Take away Jesus put this song into our heart. Right, I said we'd have one verse, but I don't know. Yeah, let's sing it all the way through, and then it can give an opportunity, and then we can, uh, yes, second verse. someone like who would love to share with us yes we just um, last week Ellie was actually a junior camp now it was the fourth time uh, fourth time that she's actually been but it was different because previous years she knew who was going as you know she can get excited about who she was going to stay with this year she knew nobody 
Now, if that was me, I would say, oh, I can't go. I, I need to know who I'm going to sit with, have meals with. So on Friday, when they were leaving, I got a video sent. She's right at the back because she's so tall. Ginger hair stands out a mile. And she absolutely loved it. But one of the things she did, she hasn't told me this, she had a snake round her neck. I think it was alive. Either way, I would think, oh. But more importantly, I hope that stirs her to want to come back. It only takes one and then somebody else. That's my plea. Yes. Anyone else? Wow, 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 wow. We're going to sing it. You can stand up, but if you want to sit down, you can do and we'll sing it. Can we get it back? Yeah. No. Jesus put me so into Linda mentioned earlier about um, the fact that we had a funeral on Monday and uh, we had the funeral of Gordon Quinn and uh, bless him, Gordon had been such a great encourager of the band here and um, yes, he was a good cornet player himself and really enjoyed his playing. But yes, as part of our family, we've, we've lost him and so many more recently. But the, uh, one of the songs or the pieces of music that Gordon wanted as part of his funeral and he wanted uh, to just make sure that everything was, was right. And he rang me up, oh, some weeks ago before he died and asked if I would just go through the music uh, and look at the words so the words could be put there for everybody to look at on Monday as they heard this music. And so thinking about Gordon as well, but for us as part of that family and the lovely music by Len Valentine of I Know Thou Art Mine. So let's just uh, listen to this music again and uh, think of Gordon, think of those that we've lost, but thank the Lord for 
our family here and our wider family and uh, just to bring a prayer for them as we take this time just to listen to this lovely music. of glory and endless delight I'll ever adore thee and dwell in thy sight I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow if ever I love thee my Jesus tis now all part of 
the family. Do you like family gatherings? I hope you do. Um, perhaps they don't happen very often. Those uh, special occasions, yes, births, marriages, funerals, special events like anniversaries, significant birthdays. Gordon? Yes? What was it? Seventy? Seventy. Did you have a good time? Yeah? Great, significant birthdays. But have you thought that uh, today and every time we come together for worship is a family gathering? We're the family of God, and we're all part of one family together, the body of Christ. And as Christians, we're united with Christ through that power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. And I just want to share today just three, well, I've put down fantastic things about God's family. And that's the first one, that we are united with Christ through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. Paul reminds those Ephesian Christians and I believe it's true for us that even before the world began, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be part of his family. I suppose in one sense, if we go down that idea, before we were a Christian and we asked Jesus to come into our life, we were orphans. We were orphans, not part of a family as such. And although you had earthly parents who loved you and cared for you, you were homeless, adrift in this world, vulnerable to those powers of sin and evil in this sin-sick world. I thought about Noah. Uh, Noah, when God called him, to build the ark and the people laughed and made fun of Noah and they opposed him as he worked on what seemed to them a pointless exercise he stood out from the crowd because he followed God's will for his life I don't know if you've seen that film Evan Almighty it's a bit of a, a comedy film really where uh, Noah is called to, to build the ark. And uh, he can't quite get this, this American guy with his family around and everything else. And there on this piece of land at the side of where his house is, there he starts to build. And uh, all right, it's one of these stories where the animals come and they're helping him. And so the story goes on. But eventually the flood comes. And Noah and the family, and in the film, many others who believed and came on board together with that family were saved, along with the animals. It may have seemed a fantasy of the real scripture account, but the point is that we do live in this sin sick world. But the opportunity is there for more and more to come on board and be saved, to become part of the family. And we as members of the family, we can reach out to others with the saving word of the gospel. We can build relationships. We can try to talk to others and pray for God to give us those opportunities to speak that word of the gospel, to share our testimony, to reach out to others in his name. Yes, God promised that he would never send a flood again. But we can sense huge changes in this world, which are the result of mankind's exploitation of those world resources. We know God's ultimate plan for the world 
But for now, we know that all who accept Jesus into their life are adopted into this eternal family. We are all one with each other and with Jesus. So, yes, that first fantastic thing that we are united with Christ through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. We were adopted into that family. And secondly, Jesus died on the cross to set us free from our sin, to make us good. The saying goes, doesn't it, what are you good for? Well, we're good enough to live with him in heaven. Verse 7, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Just think of that for a moment or two. So rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom, your freedom, my freedom, with the blood of his son. And so often we just keep that image of the cross, and of Jesus on the cross, to Good Friday, to the Easter thinking. But it's good from time to time to just come back and think of that image. And all that Jesus went through for you and for me to purchase our freedom. And as a result, you and I and all our brothers and sisters in Christ, our family, adopted, one family in Jesus. So one day, one day, we will be all together with Jesus in heaven, free from all the sin and the evil of this world. It's so much in our minds at the moment, isn't it? When we think of Afghanistan, we think of what's going on. And those people who we pray are being able to come into freedom. That old song that we used to sing, whosoever will may come, and who comes to him shall never disappointed turn away. Praise the God. It's whosoever for anybody to know Jesus as their friend and saviour. Saved by the blood of Jesus on the cross. And thirdly, God has a secret plan. But I'm sure you know the secret already. Here it is. At the right time, and that's perhaps still the secret, isn't it? At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. We don't know when it's going to be, but we know that it will happen. It will happen. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. When we look at the world situation, we can't always imagine this happening. Different groups vying for power, world politics, business situations, financial struggles, tribal wars, religious conflicts. But yet the Bible tells us that God will bring everything together under his authority. God will bring peace to the world. So that there will be, yes, Revelation, we read, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. A new holy city coming down from God out of heaven. Like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. What a wonderful image. When we were on holiday, we went to Ripon. And we went into Ripon Cathedral, and uh, there in the cathedral, there was an exhibition of wedding dresses, um, highlighting, yes, the sanctity of marriage and uh, those different weddings that had taken place. 
the wedding dresses were from all over the place. In fact, we noticed that there was one, and Gordon and Connie are not here today, but Joyce is. Um, there was somebody called Letitia Mackey who had her, few, uh, had her wedding, and her wedding dress was there. But all these wedding dresses down each side of the uh, cathedral. And uh, we could imagine all the brides all beautifully adorned for their husband to be. But of course the dress was, was nothing really without the beautiful bride wearing it. Ladies who've been married, can you remember getting ready in your wedding dress? Yeah? Taking a lot of time to uh, just make sure everything was right. Yes, beautiful bride. And that wedding dress had to come alive to be that wonderful adornment a sign for the potential of life for a couple together in life, to live their life together, those wedding vows. But you and I and all God's family are part of that great wedding celebration at the end of time, a part of that new holy city, a new eternity always in God's presence. There's an old song as well that uh, I thought about. And I had to look in my old songbook, which is uh, actually falling apart. But when I opened it, the uh, bookmark was there. I don't know why it was in that couple of pages. But... Uh, it starts off, there's a golden day and it's not far away when the prince of all the earth shall no longer delay but shall send forth the call to the nations all for the royal marriage supper of the Lord. But then the challenge comes in the chorus to all who are Christians. Oh, I'm glad I'm ready. Glad I'm ready, ready with the wedding garment on. Oh, I'm glad I'm ready. I'm glad I'm ready, fighting till I join the happy throng. An old song, but the truth there. Are we ready? Are we ready with our wedding garments on to be part of that eternity? But we must come to the here and now, to each of us before God. We thank God that he cares about each of us. Enough for us to receive his forgiveness and saving grace that we are adopted into his family. If you've not already asked Jesus into your life, then you can make that prayer to him today to ask him to come into your heart and into your life. But more than that, we know that as a family we can live our life in such a way that we reach out to others, we can touch others with that love that the Lord has given to us. By God's grace, we can make a difference in the world in which we live. Even before the world was made, God loved you. He chose you in Christ to be part of his family. You were adopted, made ready to live with Jesus for eternity. We'll share some moments of prayer. I invite you to consider your life, make your response to the Lord. Yes, as in any salvation are we meeting, our place of prayer is here. And perhaps not always easy to kneel, but yet, if you would like prayer, maybe just to come forward and sit on a seat at the front be happy just to make that prayer for you and to come alongside you. Linda will just help us as we share in a song together.
699 in our songbook. 699. Every promise we can make, every prayer and step of faith, every difference we can make is only by his grace. Every mountain we can climb, every ray of hope we shine, every blessing left behind is only by his grace. And it's only by the grace of God that we can live our lives as Christians day by day. So many situations would try to bring us down. So many temptations. But we thank the Lord for his grace. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your grace and your strength to help us with whatever life may throw at us, whatever situation we find ourselves. But we thank you, Lord, that we've been reminded that we're, as part of your family, our real desire should be to reach out to those who are not within the family. Every soul we long to reach. 
And Lord, help us in our lives to look for those opportunities, to just reach out in love, to draw others into your family too. You know, Lord, you know our hearts, but we know that your grace and your strength can be our sufficiency. And we thank you, Lord, for the power of your spirit, which gives to us all the resources we need to be your people in the world of today. And we thank you, Lord, that as part of your family, we've been able to meet together to be strengthened for the task of serving you day by day. And we ask our prayers in your name. Amen. Amen. Yes, God loved the world so much, he gave his son so that anyone who believes in him will not die but have eternal life. And so we can sing. It's in our songbook, loved with everlasting love, led by grace that love to know, Spirit, breathing from above, thou hast taught me this is so. Oh, this full and perfect peace, oh, this transport all divine, in a love which cannot cease, I am his and he is mine. He doesn't fall out of love with us when we, when we do things wrong. He draws us to himself and he is that God of love and mercy. Let's stand as we sing this song. To shall we pray and may we experience the love of Christ though it is too great to understand fully may we be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God and we thank you Lord that you as our father draws us together 
into that great family. And now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than all we ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in his family and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless everyone. Now, I think, are, are we having tea downstairs? Tea? and Well, whatever you like. Well, tea or coffee. Thank you.